There are so many ETFs out there that it can be overwhelming, especially for new investors to pick one single ETF to invest in. So that's what I'm going to be speaking to you about in this video. Let's go over three ETFs that you can invest in alone to help you build wealth over time. And I'm going to keep this video as simple as possible. And if you do enjoy this content, give this video a like. It'll help this content get out there to a wider audience and also subscribe for future content. So in the spirit of keeping this video quick, short, concise, and simple, I'm going to go over each of these ETFs with a very simple overview and give you some of the simple ins and outs. So the first up on this list is the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF, ticker symbol VT. Now, this is a very good ETF for those that want to invest domestically and in foreign markets. So this invests in both foreign and U.S. stocks. It seeks to track the performance of the FTSE Global All Cap Index, which covers both well-established and still developing markets. Now, this is a globally diverse index, but it does invest heavily in the United States. So that is the biggest market as a whole. About 63% of the total holdings is in the United States followed by Japan, United Kingdom, and China. Those are all further down, and it pretty much touches on every single other market that you can imagine out there. So if you want a globally diversified ETF without having to combine multiple ETFs to achieve that, VT is a great way to do that. The expense ratio of VT is rather low at 0.07%. It is in line with most low-cost ETFs. There are, of course, ETFs that offer lower expense ratios than that, like the ones we're going to discuss further in the video. But for an ETF that covers the global market, this is a pretty cheap ETF. And this fund is extremely diverse, about as diverse as you can really get. The number of companies that it holds is 9,840. So the breadth of this ETF is large, and again, it covers the entire world. So you're going to see every single type of company in pretty much every single type of market that you can imagine. And the investment style, you get a blend of mostly large cap and there is no tilt toward value or growth, but there definitely is a tilt toward large caps. So a little bit about this top 10, you're going to see really predominant companies from the United States, of course, but you are also going to see global companies internationally. So you got Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Eli Lilly, Broadcom, and then you have your first international company here, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. And over the past five years, this ETF has increased rather nicely in price up 53.11%. Of course, you're going to see many different types of investments that have increased more than that. But for a globally diversified ETF, this is pretty solid when it comes to returns. Diversification isn't really meant to increase returns. It's to balance out returns to really mitigate risk to a particular sector. So yeah, VT, the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF, is a great ETF for people that want to be diversified globally. And it's a great ETF for new investors or even investors that have been in it for a long time that want a hands-free way of passively investing and to be good across all market conditions where the United States may or may not be doing so well at that specific point. So what if you're the type of investor that you don't really care about an international market? What if you are very bullish on the United States of America and you're very centered on the United States? Well, then VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, is probably the best ETF for you. The ETF has a very low expense ratio of 0.03%, so even lower than VT. Now, as you can imagine, as the name of this ETF suggests, it tracks the total market of the United States. So it seeks to track the performance of the CRSP, U.S. Total Market Index, and it covers large, mid, and small cap equity diversified across both growth and value styles. Now, as this fund, of course, only tracks the United States market, it is not going to be as diversified as VT, but as diversified as you can get across the United States, this ETF covers 3,674 companies. So I think that that is definitely diversified enough, and it covers both value and growth. So this is a blend, and 
Market capitalization is also tilted to a large, but you have to remember that the most significant part of the US market is going to be in their large caps. That doesn't mean it only covers large caps. It just means that it tilts toward those large caps. Now, of course, because the US market is heavily weighted to the top, the top 10 that you're going to get are basically all going to be those massive large cap companies. So you're going to see Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Eli Lilly, Broadcom, and Berkshire Hathaway. That looks somewhat similar to VT, and it also is going to look somewhat similar to the next ETF on this list, but you're going to notice all of these weightings are going to be a little bit different along the line. So VT is going to have a less value in Microsoft. It's going to have less value in Apple. And then the next ETF is going to have more value in Microsoft, more value in Apple, because we're going to get more and more narrow. And to kind of give you a more precise, maybe understanding of these ETFs, you know, further down the line, it is going to give you those small and mid cap holdings. So these are well in the hundreds and hundreds of listed holdings of this ETF percent of funds 0.01%. So each of these are a relatively insignificant part of the overall value, but you're going to see these stocks and companies still present in this ETF. So for example, you have Landstar Systems, and this is a company with a market cap of around 7 billion. So this is a lot smaller than, you know, like something like Microsoft or Apple or Google. All of these companies are pretty much mid and small caps at this point. They're all still in there to construct a diversified portfolio across the US economy. And over the past five years, VTI has gone up around 80%. So definitely outperformed VT, which tracks the global market. And that's simply because the US economy has been doing so much better than other markets. So you're definitely going to expect to see greater growth in this ETF rather than an ETF like VT that tracks all of those other markets. Of course, like I said before, VT is about diversification. It's not necessarily about outperformance over time. So yeah, VTI is definitely an ETF for investors that want to track the entire market in the United States and have large, small, and mid cap all in one. This is a fan favorite of many investors and many people recommend this ETF over even the next one because of the entire market that this ETF covers in the United States. Last up on this list is VOO, Vanguard S&P 500. And this is probably one of the most popular ETFs out there. It offers a similar expense ratio to VTI at 0.03%, so very cheap ETF. This ETF invests in stocks in the S&P 500 index, which represents the 500 largest US companies. So its goal is to track the index return, which is considered a gauge of the US total stock market. You'll pretty much hear everybody speaking about the S&P 500. This is an ETF that tracks that index. So as you can imagine, the number of companies is sitting around 500. Now this says 504, but there's other really small minor securities in there like money markets that the ETF is required to report. That doesn't mean that there's an extra, you know, four companies coming out of nowhere. But, you know, it is right in line with that 500 company mark. Now, VTI looked the same as this, but unlike VTI, this truly is going to be a large cap market capitalization slant. So it's going to be far more slanted to those larger 500 companies, unlike VTI, which had that, you know, tilt a little bit to the mid and small cap as well. So this top 10 is going to look very similar to a VTI, which is Microsoft, Nvidia, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Berkshire, Hathaway, Eli Lilly, and Broadcom. But if you remember, the weightings were a bit lower for VTI. This again is going to be far more weighted to those larger companies, unlike VTI, because VTI needs to cover the entire US market with its holdings. So VOO, 
can offer a lot more less diversification and put that percent of the money in all of the top 500 instead of including the remaining approximately 3,000 that VTI needs to cover. It is up approximately 85% over the past five years, even out beating VTI, which was up around 80%. And that is largely due to the outperformance of large caps during that time. There has been a massive bull run even in large caps over that five-year period. So a fund like VTI that covers mid and small caps, of course, isn't going to see as much growth because it's diversified into a segment that hasn't performed as well as large caps. So yeah, VOO Vanguard S&P 500 is a great way to pretty much capture the entire US market into the largest companies out there. You know, this is the least diversified ETF on this list, but you're still holding the 500 largest companies in the United States. So as far as diversification goes, you're still going to be adequately diversified with this ETF. So if this is the only ETF that you buy, I think you're going to be sufficiently diversified. Of course, some people may disagree with that because they may be a fan of total world diversification and that would fit something like VT, the first ETF on that list. But truly, a lot of people swear by VOO and they only invest in it. And if I were to only own one ETF, I would probably pick VOO myself. Thank you everyone for watching. If you did appreciate this content, give this video a like to get this content out to a wider audience. It'll give some beginner investors some nice selections to choose from as their first ETF. And remember to subscribe for future content.